since the beginning of 2022. 54 tech startups have 5,000 of employees, more than double the number of companies with layoffs over the same period last year. So what are the lessons that we as individuals can learn from this to avoid being put in the awkward position of potentially facing layoff or getting laid off? Hello, 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 this is Angie. After my consulting career, I joined two startups. The first startup I joined, the name is Revolut. It is a London-based fintech. So I was there from end of 2019 to end of 2021. So yes, I experienced the worst of the pandemic layoff. Then at the end of 2021, I joined Wealthsimple, which is a Canadian-based fintech. And as a lot of you may know, it's also been a very difficult couple of weeks or months for a lot of fintechs. So me, as along with thousands or millions of other people, are watching the market crash down with massive layoffs happening all around us. But luckily, I was not affected both times. So today I want to share the top lesson learned through these difficult times so we can all reduce the impact of market downturn layoffs. I think the very first thing I want to start off with is that we have to be very strategic in choosing the type of startups that we join. Joining tech startups comes with its own risk, as you might say, high risk and high rewards. Yes, that's true, but there are a lot of things that you can watch out for to reduce these type of risks, either in good market conditions or in market downturns like this. So first of all, company culture. In my opinion, company culture is the most important factor to consider. Yes, you might say that valuations, company performance, all of these things you have to look at. Yes, that's true. Typically a company with really good culture can, will also foster a very positive working environment which then will increase productivity, which then will, you know, help the company achieve very good results, very good valuation. And in companies that have really, really good culture, the companies would respect its employees a lot. So in a market downturns like this, and these companies typically, they will do it their best to avoid any staff layoffs. Then it will also do its best to make sure that those who are impacted can be properly taken care of. So Airbnb is actually a perfect example. During the 2020 layoff, Airbnb CEO Brian did something that is very different from a lot of the other tech companies. They took a completely different and more humane approach. In a message that was communicated to his employees, Airbnb co-founder and CEO Brian said, some very sad news today. I must confirm that we are reducing the size of the Airbnb workforce. He then told his employee that he will be transparent and offer details so that everyone is fully aware of what's happening. Also, as a result of this, Airbnb employees, those who are affected, also fared better than a lot of the others. I've also seen personally situations of other types of layoffs or have heard the news where layoffs are really cold, very abrupt. If you're on this call, you are part of the unlucky group being laid off. Your employment here is terminated effective immediately. It's been a really, really challenging decision to make. Second, you have to look at the business models as well. For a lot of the tech companies, what typically happens with mass layoff is that it is a course correction for companies that have been growing too fast for too long. So in your own due diligence, you have to ask key questions such as, do you believe in the long-term viability of this business model? Do you believe that this business model will survive the ups and downs of the market? Is the valuation of the current business inflated that it actually does not match the very optimistic revenue projections? So an example here is Cameo. Cameo is a service that allows you to get personalized message from celebrities. It exploded during the pandemic. However, do you think that it can still sustain that post-pandemic growth? Number three, leadership capabilities. Do you believe in the C-suite of your company? Do you believe that they have what it takes to make the company successful, but also what it takes to be a war CEO that can take the companies out of difficult situations? Good leadership, a wartime CEO means that they can effectively make decisions, they can pivot during difficult times. A good example here is Uber. During the pandemic, when Uber's ride-sharing business essentially went to the bottom, doubled down on its food delivery business. So as a result, while Uber actually did really well financially, Lyft actually is struggling a lot to stay afloat right now. 
then the other piece that you consider within the company is, you know, what roles or teams or departments are you going to be a part of? Positions in key or core revenue generation teams in probably those cost generating teams. So as an example, whenever there is a market downturn or decisions that have to be made about cost reduction, marketing unfortunately has always been one of the first factors to consider for a cost reduction. So after all this, you might have done your due diligence for the company, you might be in the right role, and you have done all the right things possible. But unfortunately, you might still be the one who are impacted. So what can you do in this case? So first of all, build very good savings. You should probably have about three to six months of savings in your bank account in cash. When times are good, it is so much important to always keep savings in your mind to prepare for times like this which means don't go over your means in the good times so you can prepare for the bad times when anything would happen. Second piece to remember is that market is cyclical. Downturns will not happen forever. So if you have enough savings build up, why don't you take advantage of this time of not working as a chance to relax and reset. You can either use the time to reflect, figure out what is it that you love about the last job that you wish that you can keep or what is the part that you really hate about your last job that we, you wish you can improve? What are some of your passions that you didn't have time to pursue? What are some of the things that you wanted to try that you didn't have time with your busy job? Or just use the time to explore and network, talk to as many people as you want to really establish that network so you will be ready when market is going up again. So the third piece is that focus on capability building and networking to prepare you for the next opportunity. Yes, it's true that during the market downturn, a lot of companies are laying off, but that doesn't mean that all companies are laying off. They are still companies that are doing relatively quite well and are talent hungry. As an example, Neo Financial in Canada, among the very difficult times, just raised $150 million. However, the competition might just be extra fierce. So you need to do your best to make sure that you are continuously building up your capability. You are continuously networking to know what the best opportunities are. So just be optimistic, be prepared, and you will be okay. Good luck everyone. And if you love this video, you should turn in for my next video where I talk about the differences between consulting and startups. Until next time, bye.